I think the president should be a joke. Nigerians, get ready for another wala from this country. A few hours ago, a car company CEO visited Tinubu about the ongoing protests in Nigeria. But before we dive into it, I welcome you back to Lajupok TV show. If you are watching this for the very first time, please kindly share this video to get viral, like, comment, and don't forget to click on the notification icon to get notified of our next video. We will be back shortly. The whole of crime scene is happening in the street again. The center of political news, celebrity gossip, religious gossip, and happiness in the society. Join us, the voice of Africa. In a bid to make Nigeria a better nation, Nigerians came out to protest against bad government, against poverty, against political slavery, against political jingoism, negligence and unsympathetic rule over the country. This protest was driven to end corruption, reduce the cost of living and organize support for the masses, irrespective of their status, which Tinubu does not see to see. A few moments ago, it was disclosed that the CEO of a car production company, Inosu Motors, visited President Tinubu at Aso Rock. Upon returning, he responded to interviewers by saying he begged Nigerians to please calm down and allow Tinubu to do his work as he is working relatively to make the country better. Let's watch this video of Inosan CEO talking to Nigerians. Uh, most time is that sometimes when things are going like this, I decide to come and talk to him and um, encourage him because um, people must get patience that, that this Mr. President, I know he, I know how he behaves. Let them give him time. Everything they want, they will see the better of Nigeria if they give him a short time. Let everyone calm down for him. I'm begging Nigeria for people for people to calm down. That um, they will see the better Nigeria from him, and I believe that. Okay, apart from that, mm. you said, um, we expect as partnership between the government and the innocent. Yes, um, we government is doing their best on nursing motors, and um, the partnerships are going on. And um, in a short time, in Nigeria, you everywhere you go, you see nursing motors. Okay. Yes. Uh, the info now is about CNG. Uh, okay. I started. I started CNG about two years ago, and the first person that started about CNG in Nigeria. And um, as I come here today, the CNG issue of uh, a vehicle issue. Will be over. I've discussed with them, and they will see that uh, in a short time, masses, public, we have enough CNG buses on the roads. So, what is your own assessment of the uh, government initiative on CNG? Is is the best idea? Government initiative on CNG is the best idea for transportation in this country, because CNG a lot of benefit on CNG using CNG to use CNG. Uh, because that that benefit is what I see before I started the factory to produce vehicle on CNG. Because I have I have start producing the CNG before the announcement. So today everybody that tries CNG will discover that CNG is well forward for this nation. Yes, and uh, let everybody get patient because everybody knows that the former government so died corrected the money don't supply this government is just supplying they haven't get the money so let them give him a chance everything will be okay the way i see him he wants better of this country so i'm uh, i'm encouraging everybody to get patient not to to destroy our things destroy cannot benefit there's no benefit to destroy our benefits to remain and give him chance to go to become to plan for the future of this country that's my own point In order to tackle this, I will bring it to your view another interesting video of an interview from a few hours ago with Abiodun Sanusi who talked about the present situation of the country. Perhaps the government has not understood what is actually on the ground. Let's watch this video. We will be right back. Movement, which is the main group behind the protests. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thanks so much for having me. Um, what has triggered this decision to go for an even bigger protest on August the 10th? Well, it is the defiance of the federal government, especially that of um, the president, um, Bola Metinumbu, his refusal to accede to our demands and um, the assault that has been meted on protesters and even journalists like yourself during uh, these last eight days is what has, you know, gingered us forward further to 
get over a million people on the streets in each state, in each of the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. Well, let me ask you for clarification on that, because when you say you're leading a million persons march in each of the 36 states and Abuja, do you mean that you're going to mobilize 37 million people across Nigeria or 1 million people collectively in all the 36 states and Abuja? 37 people across Nigeria. 37 million, million people. people across Nigeria. Well, that's a bit ambitious, isn't it? Well, we, we are a country of over 220 million people. So getting 37 million people on the streets to protest against bad governance is not a big deal. Yeah, but you said that um, the, the president had not hearkened to your demands. Yes. I mean, did you just expect to, you know, walk out on the street? I mean, he, he talked about dialogue. He talked about communicating, sitting down and talking with you. Shouldn't that be, shouldn't you give them a chance to communicate with you before you then make this move? You know, there are several means of communication. We, we do not sit down, we do not dialogue behind closed doors. We asked, for example, here in Abuja, we asked to use the Eagle Square as the, the venue for convergence for protesters. But the minister of the FCT, Ian Sumbike, denied us that venue, and um, the place was barricaded by the military and police officers and the DSS. So we are not in, interested in any closed door meeting or any closed door, behind door dialogue. If the president wants to dialogue, he should come to Eagle Square and speak to Nigerians, millions of Nigerians, both in Nigeria and in the diaspora. He should come speak to us the way he was there on May 29th, on June 12th. Right, so where are you going to hold this um, march in Abuja, for example? Because you said you were prevented from going to Eagle Square. The, the yeah, last but, time. Uh, despite the, uh, you know, the prevention, right, we've never stopped going there. So you just take to the streets? Basically. We take to the street right. everywhere. We occupy the whole street, the whole country. And I mean, you've effectively widened the protest twice now. First from a hunger stroke cost of living march into an end bad governance movement. And from that, that now it's evolving into a million person march on August the 10th, which is two days hence. I mean, you've got all your guns blazing, haven't you? You're really piling on the pressure. Definitely. Um, the president deserves that. Um, the federal government deserves even much more pressure because, um, you know, the cost of living has um, exacerbated. You know, people are very hungry. Uh, people are hungry. Insecurity keeps on rising across the nation. You, you go everywhere, you see how everyday people just keep buzzing your phone demanding support, financial support. People are hungry, they can't afford to eat. Now people are being paid um, 30,000 minimum with now. He recently signed and um, asking people to be paid 70,000 naira per month. 70,000 naira cannot do anything for an average Nigerian. You know, the cost of living has, has um, you know, risen over time since he announced the first subsidy um, remover. Um, last year. So you, you, you don't expect us to just sit at home while um, the president says, oh, uh, I'm doing something, you guys should go back in and, uh, you know, with time this would happen. But this same man bought private jets. He built a new apartment for his, uh, his deputy, the vice president, um, Kashim Shetima. So we're asking him just to do the basics. Give Nigerian workers 250,000 naira minimum wage. Reverse the first subsidy remover. End insecurity. These are just some of the few demands. Release all um, politically imprisoned persons or detained persons. These, are, these things are not hard to do. You right. can do it. Yeah. I'm going to come to the to those detained persons in, in a minute. But just in response to um, the things you say that are not being done, the government has been spelling out what they've been doing to alleviate the hardship. They say agricultural production has increased. Um, they've given temporary cash payments to those who are very poor. They've distributed tens of thousands of tons of grain from the National Reserve. And they're urging people to be patient, but clearly your patience has worn thin. But where's the proof? It's, it's not evidence in the public. People, you can see it in the eyes of Nigerians that they are hungry. So if he says he's doing that, probably his, um, his, um, his minions are pocketing whatever it is he, he claimed to have to be given out to citizens. Citizens are hungry. These things are not getting to anybody. The poor of the, of, of the poorest of Nigerians are not getting these things. People can't even afford three square meal per day. 
So if the president says he's doing an agricultural revolution or whatever he calls it, it is not getting to the people. Yeah, but he, he can't wave a magic wand. He's not Harry Potter, is he? He can't <laughs> wave a magic we, we wand. Are not, we are not asking him to do well, magic. Yeah, but that sounds like what you're asking well, him last to do, year to when, wave a magic when wand. He, when, and when, within a year, everything when he is, announced is the removal of the, uh, you know, the removal of the first subsidy last year on May 29th, while he was being sworn in, he didn't do any magic. He just took the microphone and said, first subsidy is gone. And since then, we've got into trouble. Mm. So you should do the same thing now and get us back and say, into our health order. Fuel subsidy is back on. Yes. <laughs> it's simple as that. Yeah. Well, of all your demands, um, and there are quite a few of them, yeah. of all your demands, perhaps the most fundamental is your call for the government to address the constitutional foundations of Nigeria, yeah. which you say is the basis of the political, ethnic, and development disaster that this country has been facing and the failure of successive governments to meet the fundamental objectives of security, welfare, etc. You wanted this to be addressed with utmost urgency. Have you heard anything in that regard? Yeah, we, we haven't heard it. The president didn't say anything about that at all during yeah. his last But I mean, it's, it's the job, not so much of the president, but yeah. the National Assembly. Definitely. We are not, but of course, it could mean it to the National Assembly to, to work on that. And um, the president is not the only person in government that we are facing. We are also demanding good governance from the 36 state governors and the FCT minister and also right. the lawmakers. So it's not just about President Tinumbu. It's about the Nigerian political system. And, and that's why you're, you're taking it like, to all the states Definitely. And to make sure that the noise that you make is heard in the states. Yeah, it has houses. been heard everywhere. Right. There have been protests in Kano, in uh, Rivers, in everywhere. Right. So, so yeah. what's the situation with your colleagues who've been arrested and are currently being detained? Are they still being held? Because at one point... I think the secret police, the DSS, said they were not the ones holding one of your colleagues, Michael Lenin. Yeah, that, that, is, that is a lie. The DSS picked Lenin um, on August 5th at his home in Apo, Abuja, around 2 a.m., mm. midnight. And um, he, was taken to, he was taken to, you know, a place where we didn't know. But later, he was later detained at the... Um, Intelligence Response Unit of the Inspector General of Police, the former SAS, SAS office at Guzape. So, you know, today our lawyers have been there, they've been there since, they went there today. Before I got into the studio, I was just informed that others that were arrested alongside um, Lenin have been released, but that they got an order from the um, National Security Advisor, uh, Mr. Nuhu Ribadu, that Lenin must not be released. Right. I don't know why Mr. Ribadu wants to keep Lenin in detention. But he has to come and tell Nigerians why he's keeping him. Lenin has done nothing wrong. Right. He was only exercising his rights. So they, the government has no reason to detain him. Indeed. Yeah. Um, are you worried that as voices rise in anger, because, I mean, a lot of the people we saw protesting were angry, perhaps justifiably so, but they were clearly angry. Are you worried that as voices rise in anger, that decorum could unravel and things could get really dark and violent on August the 10th? Well, we don't think so. We are not um, a violent people. Uh, even at the Take It Back movement, we are not violent. We have always been peaceful. We didn't just start yesterday. We've always been here, and we've always been peaceful. However, even you know the pockets of violence that occurred during this uh, last eight days came from the side of the, from the part of the government, the police, the DSS. The DSS shot at protesters at the national stadium, the same venue which the government got a court order for. For, you know, for um, protesters to, uh, of course, um, the court order has elapsed um, just yesterday because it was a seven day um, ex parte order and it has elapsed. So, despite the fact that we do not even think that such an order should have been given, which infringes on the, on the rights of Nigerians, however, uh, we're glad that it has elapsed and uh, Nigerians will keep on protesting. We've never stopped, even while the court order was on. We've always, we've continued to, to protest. So, the, you know, the government have been attacking protesters with tear gas, live bullets. Over 40 protesters have been killed across Nigeria since August 1st, since the protest started. On the first day alone, uh, one of the national newspapers reported the second day, on August 2nd, that 17 persons were killed on August 1st. So 
the person that is no the the, the, the the part the person that is not peaceful is the government, not the protesters, not the Nigerian people. Yeah. We've been peaceful. I don't think no police officer has been killed. We do not have any arms. We don't have knife. We don't have guns. They are the ones who have been shooting at protesters. But but I mean, given the political panorama against which these protests are taking place in Nigeria. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised by the protests and the way it potentially could whip people up. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, we, we are glad that people are waking up. I mean, whip, whip rather than up. wake people oh, up. Okay. Whip them up into a frenzy. Is no, no I, I do not think so. That I don't think it will whip people up into a frenzy. Nigerians are, are strong people. Nigerians are not cowards. Uh, they can't be whipped into frenzy at all. Well, I mean, looking at the anger that bubbled to the surface, um, some of it clearly turned into violence and thuggery. I mean, we saw that. Do you think it's your responsibility, the organizers of the protest, to ensure that it is peaceful, or does that responsibility lie with the police? You know, on our part, we've always told our people to be peaceful, and we've always told protesters. But it is the duty of the government and also the police you know, to secure lives and properties. So the police should, wherever you see that some persons are losing whatever properties or causing mayhem, you arrest them. Those ones are not protesters. They, they mm. could be government-sponsored talks. But, but, but they are you, not our people. Right. But, but you, you, you can understand, and I'm not trying to give you a hard time, I'm just trying to see it from all sides, because it's our job to enlighten the public. Um, I mean, you can see why there might be a bit of nervousness on the part of the government. For example, when you look at Bangladesh, where student leaders and young people have in the past few days led a protest that successfully overthrew the government. I mean, when you see a place like Bangladesh, what comes to your mind? Hope. Hope? Yeah. Hope in what sense? That we could achieve more than even we could achieve what we are asking for and even more than that but it begs the question what are you aiming what's the end game what are you aiming to achieve the end game is good governance and end to bad governance that's the end so what yeah. can the administration do now to stave off further protests beyond officials sort of snooping at you and snapping at your heels they should still to our demands reverse the first subsidy removal announce um, a 250,000 Naira minimum wage, release all detained um, NSAS activists and other politically detained persons. But, I mean, perhaps releasing detained persons and that kind of thing might be something that can be reasonably achieved. But that's the, why it's necessary to have a dialogue. I mean, are, are you aware of the potential damage that could be done to the economy and the reform program and the message that might be sent out internationally to potential investors um, that Nigeria is, in terms of its fidelity to its policies, is very shaky. Um, well, <laughs> we, we are not the ones making the policies. It is the government that makes policies. Ours is, we are demanding for good governance from our own government. You know, for example, there have been Boko Haram insurgency in the country for years. ISWAP have been ravaging some part of, of the Northeast. Yet people are still investing in Nigeria. So our yeah, but protest, they're not investing in that part of Nigeria. Well, I was in Adamawa some, some weeks back. Uh, I saw international companies. Yeah, but Adamawa is, not, is nowhere near as bad as the... the as the, Borno. Yeah, the, the real epicenters. And, and to be fair, things have improved. Yeah. I mean, it's not as bad as it was perhaps in 2014 or 2015 or sort of subsequent years. I mean, it's, it's you know, the insurgency yeah, but, but, have gone But they're still there. Boko Haram still, there was still a bomb blast in Borno some, some weeks back. Mm. Yeah. So people are still living in fear in, in, the, in the Bay State, Borno, Adamawa and Yobe. And now it has, it has moved into Zamfara and some parts of Kaduna, even in the FCT. You know, they've been banditry everywhere. So it, that's the duty of the government to, rather than, you know, as like I, was, I said um, somewhere earlier, the, you know, the chief of defense staff, um, Christopher Musa, rather than deploying soldiers on the street, he should deploy them 
to um, terrorist ravage areas. We don't need soldiers on the street. This, this, this is a protest. Only the police should be there, and probably um, the NSCDC. And those ones shouldn't even fire tear gas at people, as long as they are peaceful. Yes, actually, that, that's an interesting comment you make, because I was with someone the other day, and they said, well, look at all the police cars and the military vehicles that are lined up on oh, the streets. Protest. Why can't those people go, go to, to fight the, yes. the, you know, the, the insurgents and all the other people? Although, arguably, the military will say that they are doing that. But can you say at this point that essentially your protests have really not achieved anything so far? in well, terms of what you wanted to achieve? Well, it wouldn't be right to, to say our protest hasn't achieved, achieved anything so far. Because if, if not for anything, it has raised the consciousness of Nigerians. And that's, that's an important thing. It is a it? very important thing. You know, like Karl Marx said, that you know, uh, the material condition of people is what determines their consciousness. So the material conditions of Nigerians, hunger and poverty, impoverishment, is determining their consciousness at this moment. And, and, and now that you've mentioned uh, Karl Marx, that brings up the issue of Russia and the waving of Russian flags. What's your reaction to that? And your assessment of the way the, the government has reacted to it? Well, Karl Marx existed during the Soviet Union. Russia is even from the Soviet Union. Yeah, but Russia is, is, is a Soviet Union boiled down to one country. And the heart of the Soviet Union was always Russia. Yeah, you're correct. But um, of course, we have nothing to, to do with um, the alleged use of uh, Russian flags. And however, that is somewhat immaterial. Why is the government or the, the security agency so concerned about, you know, people waving some pieces of clothes around? Those are well, just mere I mean, pieces. It, it, we, we, we see um, flags of various countries at hotels. Um, the Russian embassy, for example, if do, the allegation is true, the Russian embassy, embassy is here in Nigeria. It has the Russian flag on the Nigerian soil. Different hotels, several hotels. What am I even saying? There's a, there's, there's a club called Moscow Underground here in Abuja. It has the Russian flag. <laughs> yeah, but, but the, the intention is different. That's why when you're in court, they, they, they always assess what the motive is. You see what I mean? That's part of a legal process, is establishing motive. Because once you establish motive, then it kind of, it's like a domino effect. I mean, the, 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 the question is the motive behind waving a flag, Russian flag, at a protest that is aimed against the government. You know, you have to be shocked that those waving those, because there are few persons, I saw some clips, mm. those waving those, the, the, the Russian flag might be government-sponsored persons. You can't, you can't take anything beyond this government. You can't. They, they might not be people who are even protesting for, for you know, against hunger. They might be government-sponsored talks who only want to, you know, cause mayhem and, you know, give reason for, for security agencies to clamp down protesters. But in all, uh, But that's uh, purely speculative, isn't it? Of course, uh, the, claim, the claim that they are part of us or, you know, the protest is being sponsored by any foreign uh, power is also speculative. It is false, even in, in our own opinion. It is false because no one is sponsoring us. No international body is sponsoring us. Right. Even though you quoted Karl Marx. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Karl Marx but, is but in fairness, I mean, I, that's not anything against you. I mean, Karl Marx is a philosopher. Definitely. That everybody, I mean, I've read Karl Marx and, and a lot of people. He doesn't make me a communist Definitely. or anything like Definitely. that. But what kind of a moment would you say this is in nigeria how much is this country at a crossroads well i think um, this is an awakening moment you know for nigerians and uh, also for the nigerian government it is it is a notice for them to sit tight the government especially to sit tight you mean sit up yeah to sit up and you know right you know get things right not, um, you know, just going about traveling, junketting from country to country, you know, getting luxurious cars, building homes, you know, laundering our funds. It's a moment, it is, it is a moment for a call to action. Let people live well, let them live in peace. And you have, you have no problem. Governance is not, is not that difficult. We, 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 we travel to other countries, we see other countries that are doing well. So they, they so, don't do so it by you, magic. Why do you think it's going belly up in Nigeria here? Why do you think it's going wrong? I think it's just, um, I think it's just these people are not interested in 
developing the country. That is what I believe. They are not interested in, in develop, they just want to get there and loot whatever they can loot. Because it does take political will to get things done. They don't have that political will. And they are not ready to do it. That's why when you ask them that, why don't you do this? They just say, go and shoot at them. Rather than saying, okay, how do, you, how do you want me to do it? If you want a dialogue, you, you know, you don't just say you want dialogue by words of mouth. You come to the Eagle Square. In the presence of all Nigerians, you come and announce, you tell us the policies that you can immediately, you know, the demands that you can immediately meet and the ones you want us to give you time for you to meet. Not that you call us, we, don't, we can't go behind closed doors. You know, we, we don't do that. So in other words, you're not going to dialogue with them? No, we are not uh, against dialogue. We're asking the president to come in broad daylight. Yeah, but he doesn't and have so. to come to. I mean, there, are all, there to. are all kinds of issues that would arise he's not, he's not, for him going to the middle of a protest. Nothing would march. happen. He has a security hit. You know, he's not bigger than any Nigerian. He's an elected official. He's a public servant. So it's only right for him to come to the public and talk to the people. Do you believe that history is on your side and that this million person march could open up a hopeful path into Nigeria's future or, or are you sort of just, it's just another one of, of those protests because you said, you know, the needle hasn't moved and it's not likely to move? No, no, absolutely history is on our side. Even posterity uh, will be on our side. <laughs> like um, this is going to, well, we can't judge posterity now, can we? Yeah, well, at least we can, we can be hopeful. And of course, when you know, when your conscience is, is, is right, when you know you're doing the right thing, you have, you have to be sure that posterity would judge you right. You know, the history, history will be on our side because we know that this thing that we've started would result in success. It will be successful. Whether the president likes it or not, it will be successful because we are not going to give up. Whether... Um, on the 10th of August or beyond that. We, are, we won't give up until these demands are met. Okay. Well, I want to thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Sanusi, for coming in to talk to us. Uh, Biodun Sanusi is one of the leading organizers of the Take It Back movement, which is the main group behind the protests, and you heard them there announcing that um, they're planning a 37 million person march on August the 10th, which is two days from now. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you so much. My people, as you can see, these rich people in Nigeria are the true evils tormenting us with their self indulgement and lavish lifestyle. It is nothing short of a disgrace how they can emerge from their crushy, well fortified bubbles and start lecturing a nation that is starving and angry to calm down. How dare you come here and tell us to settle down with free without offering any form of relief? At least, if you want us to cool our anger, how about you start by giving us some basic necessities? Are we expected? to just starve while you live in your palatia homes enjoying every luxury known to man do you want us to die of hunger while you sit comfortably on your piles of wealth can't you put yourself in our shoes for even a second and understood our suffering and let's talk about innocent was your visit to president Tinubu truly aimed at benefiting the nation or was it all about your self-interest do you think we are so naive that we can't see through your motives your visit was likely orchestrated because you have been ordered to deliver some vehicles it seems to me that you went there merely to thank him for his business dealings and to secure your own financial interest. Your supposed plea for calmness is nothing more than a thinly made attempt to protect your business transaction is and it's pathetic. Frankly, what you and the other allies truly deserve is a divine reversal of your fortune. Pray that God lowers your financial status to that of the average Nigerian. Only then you will really you will truly understand. Only then you will truly understand why we are so serious and why we are fighting so hard for this country. Your detachment from our realities and your complete disregard for our struggles only serve to fuel our anger and resolve. My people, can you believe the sheer audacity and hypocrisy of these so-called leaders? It's infuriating and unacceptable. Well, don't let me waste your precious time with these charlatans. Stay tuned for our next video where we'll dive deeper into these issues. But before we go, make sure to share this video across every social media platform. Like, comment and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next update. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Please don't forget to like, comment and share and stay tuned for our next video.